Hello students, shall we continue our types of operating system? The next category of operating system is time sharing operating system. Already we have seen batch processing operating system and multi-programmed operating system in previous video. Now we shall go for time sharing operating system. Time sharing is a technique which enables many people located at various terminals or various computers to use a particular computer system at the same time. Time sharing or multitasking is a logical extension of multiprogramming. Processors time which is shared among multi-users simultaneously is termed as time sharing. What's the difference between a multi-program batch system and time sharing system? On a multi-program batch system, the objective is to maximize processor use. But in case of time sharing system, the objective is to minimize response time. Response time can be considered as time taken to get an output after providing the input. Now let us see how time sharing system works. In the case of time sharing system, the set of process which are ready are put on a scheduling list. And from the scheduling list, scheduler picks one of the program and gives it to CPU for execution. If that process completes its execution, it has gone to a terminated state or exit state. But the problem here is that the time allotted for each process is already fixed. If the time expires or the time slice expires, the process executing in the CPU will be preempted back to the scheduler list. It will be put to the last of the queue. So, the rare or uh, the preempted program will be added to the rare end of the queue. For example, suppose here three programs are ready A, B, C. In the first time slice, the program A gets executed. In the second time slice, program B is executed. In the term, third time slice, the program C gets executed. After the execution of three programs, here only three programs are ready in the schedulers. Next, the chance is again given back to first process A. Once a time slice gets expired, then B can execute, then C can execute. You can see here A is not executing again. The reason is the execution of the process A is completed. So, Processor need not be allotted for the process A again. Here also the same thing is shown. The process P1 starts executing first. When the time slice get over, P1 is preempted. So who gets executed again? P2. When the time slice for P2 gets expired, P2 is preempted for P3. The three process execution in the schedule is over. So P1 can be brought back on the CPU again. Here, the process states of each process can be as shown here. Initially, all the process will be in the schedule list. So they can be said that they are in a ready state. Once CPU is allotted, we can see the process in the running state. When time slice get expired, the run from the running state process go back to ready state. Here also, uh, when a program is performing an input operation or output operation, from the running state program is sent to a blocked state. That is shown here. P1 is requesting some IO operation. So P1 is put in a vague state or block state. So at that time, who will be using CPU? The next process P2 will be using CPU. Once P1 finishes its input output operation, it can be brought back to ready state or to the 
scheduling list. This is how a time sharing operating system work. And the scheduling policy used here is known as round robin scheduling. That is first the process A execute, then process B, then process C. Once a cycle is over, again who can execute? A can execute. Then the next process B can execute, then the process C can execute. So this goes in a round robin fashion. So the scheduling policy is called round robin scheduling. The advantages of time sharing operating system are it provides the advantage of quick response. It avoids duplication of software and reduces CPU idle time. Disadvantages are problem of reliability. And there's a question of security and integrity of user programs and data. There's a problem of data communication too. That's the end of time sharing operating system. The next operating system is real time operating system. A real time system is defined as a data processing system in which time interval required to process and respond to input is so small that it controls the environment. That is, we need to get response in a faster manner. Within a fraction of seconds or microseconds, the system should respond. That is a cap capability of a real-time operating system. The time taken by the system to respond to an input and display of the required output information is defined as response time. That is a time interval between input given and output produced. So in the real time system, the response time should be very less compared to online processing systems or any other operating system. There's an architecture of real time system where the response is produced in a faster manner. And the real-time systems are used when there are rigid time requirements on the operation of a processor. A flow of data and real-time systems can be used as a control device in a dedicated application. In applications like air traffic control system or weather forecasting system, the output response should be produced very fast in a rigid time. So in such situations, we can use this real-time operating system. A real-time operating system must have a well-defined fixed time constraint. Otherwise, the system will fail. And there are two categories of real-time operating system, hard real-time system and soft real-time system. Among this, hard real system are very strict and we should get response very fast. These systems are built for saving life like automatic parachutes or airbags which are required to be readily available in case of any accident. Virtual memory is almost never found in this system. It should act so fastly but the soft real systems are less restrictive. A critical real-time task get priority over other tasks and retains priority until it completes. Soft real systems have limited utility than hard real time system. Examples for soft real time systems are multimedia, virtual reality, advanced scientific projects like undersea exploration, planetary rovers, etc. So in case of hard real-time system, be, before the deadline, we should get an output or response. But in case of soft real-time system, this deadline is not a compulsion. There can be a little delay in getting the response. And the next operating system is distributed system. Distributed systems use multiple central processors to serve 
multiple real time applications and multiple users data processing jobs are distributed among the processors accordingly the processors communicate with one another through various communication lines such as high speed buzzers or telephone lines they are referred to as loosely coupled systems or distributed systems processors in a distributed system may vary in size and functionality these processors can be referred to as sites nodes computers and so on so on this figure we can see many different nodes are connected to a communication network and sharing some data or processing for a common task but each and every systems are independent the advantages of distributed systems are with resource sharing facility a user at one site may be able to use resources available at another speed of the exchange of data with one another via electronic mail can be facilitated if one site fails in the distributed system the remaining sites can potentially continue operating so it automatically improves the reliability of the system it can provide better service to the customers reduction of load on the host computer is also an advantage of distributed system reduction of delays and data processing is also an advantage so we have discussed real time systems time sharing systems and distributed systems in this lecture thank you stay home be safe